This time on Railroad Australia. Testing times at 160 kilometres an hour. For the state-of-the-art velocity train. Oh, oh a bit of wheel slip there. Okay. The Savannah Lander. Heads into a tropical flood zone. Which nice and cautiously take it really easy across it. And a track repair team. Sleeve to Rob, gets it down, Rob. Battle day and night to keep the trains running. They are the kings of the Australian outback. You've got to concentrate all the time. Some of the biggest trains in the world. If things go wrong with these things, it normally makes a big mess. On epic journeys. It's a bomb on wheels. Up through a hostile continent. Holy crap! Have a look at all this water. A nation depends on them. Oh go boys, get in there. And the teams that keep these metal monsters on the tracks. Yeah, you hauling huge loads of food, freight and mineral riches across incredible distances. We are out in the middle of nowhere, that's for sure. Big trains. It'll be a massive challenge to us. Big country. No one's ever done it. We'll see how we go. In Dandenong, Victoria, a cutting-edge multi-million dollar train is getting ready to leave the factory. With a top speed of 160 kilometres an hour, it's packed with electronics that fine-tune the train's performance. Yeah, that's good. Look at that. But it's not going anywhere unless it can pass a series of tough tests. You just check all the way around. <laughs> so we're hoping not to find water. But we sometimes do. Yes. First up, fitters Bent Moller and Darren Wacker are checking how it holds up in wet weather conditions. How's it going, Bent? Yeah, all so far so good. Any leaks could damage the train's electrical wiring. On the inside, we don't want to find it. Like it might be over here and it'll work all its way way there and it'll come out here somewhere. The Velocity train is part of a fleet of 75 urgently needed to ease demand on the network connecting regional Victoria to Melbourne. Taking delivery of these trains is absolutely vital because our patronage levels are absolutely through the roof and the moment they roll out the door, they're getting used. But this train still hasn't passed the wet weather tests. We give it about five minutes each spot. It's a bit like the Melbourne weather. Probably when I go out the car park, be running out there now. So. But just as the last carriage is getting a soaking. Oh gee, what's happened now? The water's gone. There we go, I'm better. Okay. Well, we've got a blockage in the pump. All the way through your sprinkler system as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's got debris in it, I so we've got to get this up through your pump as well. We've got to pull it all out. No pump, no water. And the testing can't continue. Okay. You gotta hang on to that for me. Something's blocking it, but I don't know what. Or something stuck open. Now we're gonna schedule the keep and it's holding us up. <laughs> it's a pump was stuffed up, so we're trying to fix the thing. Get your spanners bent. Yep. With the pressure on. They give the pump a lightning quick clean out. Yeah, we've done that. Clean, the filter's clean. And put it back together. All right, so you got the other little screw on over the other side? Yeah, it's all good. Done. Now to put their repairs to the test. It's a moment of truth. Oh, look at that. With the pump back at full power, it's time to finish the job. Sometimes you get leaks running down here, around the side here. 
but this one's uh, looking pretty good at the moment. The train passes, watertight and ready to roll. Now the serious testing can begin. Driver Chris Barnett must determine if this train is safe. There's a couple of million dollars of uh, taxpayers' money that we're in command of at the moment, so best paid we look after it, hey? In the tropics of North Queensland, Will Kemp and Lee Johns are about to take their 54-year-old 2000-class rail motor Close on, wasn't it? up the roughest track in Australia. After weeks of torrential rain, they need to check that the track will be safe to use for the upcoming tourist season. During the wet season, which is still upon us, you know, it gets a lot of, lot of rain and that can affect the track. Running from Cairns to Forsyth, the 450 kilometre rail track was built over a century ago to haul copper and tin. Now it's an important link for remote communities, bringing tourists and provisions. We're really getting desperate at the moment. Our supplies are down on nearly everything. We're using the train as his first trip, so hopefully we'll get here soon. To reach their destination, the boys must negotiate their way through areas already damaged from earlier flooding. And the danger's not over yet. There's a lot of low bridge creeks, so we'll just be keeping our eyes peeled for any flash flooding through them. Run into trouble out here, and they'll have to deal with it themselves. You need to be very on the ball, because when it goes wrong on a train, it goes pretty wrong. Dawn. Time to leave civilization behind. And start the climb into the rainforest. They soon discover they could be in for a rough ride. Rock fall. Don't know if that's going to be an indicator of things that come here west. It's really new too, hey? Yeah. Up here, over two metres of rain can fall during the wet season. It's just a bit of a reminder that we're going into parts of the country that we haven't been for ten weeks. So just to be vigilant, remain cautious and just keep an eye for anything unexpected ahead of us. After crawling up the range... Um, there's a big box here. There's a surprise in store for Lee. What's in that? Hey, good thing you reminded me. <laughs> Ex-zookeeper Will has a passenger wow. that needs dropping off. I had a, a lace monitor handed to me uh, quite a few weeks back. There you go, who mate. Who had been stuck in an engine bay of a car. So you can see the burns on the back there. They've healed up, but I think that scar tissue is going to be there for the rest of his life. However, Will's affection for reptiles can have its downside. Last year, I guess I got a little bit complacent. Didn't have a, uh, a good enough grip on the guana and uh, turned around and grabbed me on the, the arm. Uh, taught me a lesson that, uh, you know, sometimes when you're out in the middle of the, the bush like this, you're a long way away from medical attention. Wildlife for us on, on board the train is, is a big thing. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone as passionate about anything as what Will is about his wildlife. See you later, mate. The boys now head deeper into the wilderness, but their progress is halted by more damage from the wet. Got a fallen tree up here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're heading to Kobu train station to do some maintenance work. 38-year-old Lara Coglin and her rapid response maintenance team are one hour into a hectic day's work on the tracks for Metro Trains Melbourne. We're in a different spot every day. We could be doing maintenance and then you get a call and you've got to rush off and quickly readjust to, to what's going on there. Repairing track is tough, back-breaking work. Another one over here, Jack, too. you got a clip. And Lara is the only woman doing this job in the state of Victoria. I love it, you know, like I love being outdoors and I love, you know, working hard, way better than being in an office for me. Rather than shut down a busy line, Lara and her team must work around the 80 kilometre per hour trains. Oh, got a train on. 
It's not for the faint-hearted. We've got to be able to maintain sight and get off track within 25 seconds. Lara is one of 700 maintenance workers looking after over 800 kilometres of track across 18 different train lines. Work from the bottom up, you know, and I've worked just as hard as anyone else and probably harder because I've uh, been the only female there. Nearly half a million passengers will use the rail network today. 210 trains will make over 2,000 journeys. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Lara and her team must make sure the tracks can withstand such heavy use. About 10 clips on the up and down track. That means constant repairs and replacing any parts showing wear and tear. The biscuits hold the railing gauge, so if they're broken or anything like that, it's the safest way so nothing slips. move on to a, another area now, so do some more maintenance. New clips in place, and it's a 10 kilometre dash east to the next job. I got into railways through one of my best friends who's third generation rail, and all her uncle's father and everyone work in the railways. So I came down to Melbourne and started and I haven't finished <laughs> since. The rapid response team have been diverted to carry out time critical repairs. They've had a shutdown for this area so they've stopped all the trains in this particular running line. So it's an urgent job and we've got to hand it back by four so they can get the trains running again for, uh, it'd be for peak hour to get, get it moving. That leaves Lara and her team just three hours to get the job done. Let me get into it. Now that we've got this emergency job, it makes it all hands on deck. The team takes a closer look at the job ahead. It's up there, eh? A warped section of track. There's one here. And with peak hour just a couple of hours away... Yeah, all right, there. one there. ..it could be more than Lara can handle. A bit longer than I thought, yeah, but we didn't know what we were to expect until we got out here, so having a look at it, we're going to be working all the way up to the... near the bridge. Further up. It's long. On the outskirts of Melbourne, Chris Barnett is about to push a brand new Velocity train to its limits. You get to do a whole range of stuff that you don't normally get to do in uh, regular driving. You sort of drive it like you stole it, if you will. You're putting your brakes on hard. You're really pushing the limits of the equipment, and yeah, it's good fun. But fail any of a series of stringent handling tests, and the train can't go into service. You know they're uh, absolutely brand spanking new when they're not plastered head to toe in bugs. To some degree it has that new car smell. New carpet, it smells like a fresh office. Chris's employer V-Line need to know it can handle the demands of working as a heavily used commuter train. Otherwise, it could cause delays and huge costs. So far so good, mate. That's good. That's what we want here, mate. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Yeah, that's for sure. When he does come out here, or well, uh, you know, you've got to be weary of him. He's one of the drivers who are pretty particular and everything. On board, tester Alan Dunn must check the data that determines whether the train passes or fails. It's always nerve-wracking. You're sort of hoping that the vehicle's going to go OK for you and nothing break down, and that is a bit embarrassing if it comes up for a particular reason. To warm up, Chris will see how the train handles, close to its maximum speed. What we'll do first up, mate, is we'll do 130. Yep, no worries. Thanks, mate. Yeah. That's not quite going absolutely flat out, um, but it's a fairly common speed for these trains to travel at. What's the condition of the track, Chris? Oh, look, it's intermittent, mate. Some of it's dry and some of it's wet, so we'll certainly test her out. No problems, Al. That's good. Smooth running at 130 kilometres an hour. But when Chris tries to stop, trouble. Got a little bit of wheel flip there, yeah, Chris.
on a slippery track. Today's testing just got tougher. Deep in the Queensland outback, the Savannah Lander has hit a snag as it tries to get through to Ainsley for the first time after the wet season. With the tree's trunk still firmly in the ground, the boys will need to take matters into their own hands. I guess we don't carry a chainsaw with us because we head in a pretty remote country and any accidents happen with that, you're probably just going to bleed to death in the middle of nowhere, you know, help's not going to come, so they give us uh, an axe. <laughs> I'm buggered, I'll tell you that. Off season makes you soft. Of course, this is something we'll need to report. While I'm here, some old sleepers. In true Will style, he can't go for too far past a fallen down tree without searching for snakes for about half an hour. These wooded areas are a popular hiding place for one of Australia's most fearsome killers, the brown snake. This time though, the search comes up empty. Nothing but toads. Did you find anything? Just toads. Oh, I need a Lucas aid. The Savannah Lander forges on, with the boys on the lookout. On the first run of the season, anything can happen. A lot of younger cattle at the moment too, which are a little bit flighty. So you've got to keep your eye on those, they, they sneak onto the track, but um, it's something that we deal a lot with. But there's no avoiding the next hazard. A series of bridges that have taken a pounding during the wet season. There's the possibility that the floodwaters have been over there and left trees, debris, bits and pieces on top of the track. Um, so this is the bit where we really need to be uh, approaching these creeks with a lot of caution. Floodwaters can shift track and damage sleepers. <laughs> and there's no way of knowing how it will hold up. Up there, eh? In the north of Melbourne, Lara Coglin and her maintenance team are up against it. There's one here. So keep going, Lara. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, it's All right. there. One there. They have just two hours to repair over 100 metres of warped track. Just put a mark there. Before peak hour in Australia's second biggest city. Further up. Another six person team has been called in to help got a low spot in it and that causes a uh, trying to twist point on time to straighten things out put a jack there so we're gonna put a jack there lift it up and hopefully to run it out and make it smooth after raising the problem sections of track the team must stop them sinking back down well I'm gonna go to the other jack a couple more that's it yeah be all right and that calls for some high-powered machinery so, um, yeah, we'll just get into it and try and get it done. These tamping machines will pack the crushed stone ballast into any gaps and keep the track level. The race is on to open the line before rush hour hits. Yeah, it's a good workout. Three thirty, so we've got half an hour to spare, so that's good. Now me and Dave just have to go through, certify the track. Lara must decide if the track is safe for two hundred ton trains to use. It is a lot of responsibility to say that the train's running safely, so we've got to make sure that everything's perfect. Our names to this, it's a legal document, you know, it's a lot of responsibility. It's 
safe for the trains to go through. Job well done. The next job is a 30 minute drive west to one of the city's busiest commuter lines. Heading into um, Mooney Ponds Creek Bridge, which is around North Melbourne. So there's probably six to eight tracks through this section, so it gets pretty busy. Lara needs to repair a damaged crossing point, but these trains won't be stopping for her. Ooh, it does look a bit out there, doesn't it? In far north Queensland, the Savannah Lander is making a hazardous crossing. A bit of a crooked bend in it. Until recently, this bridge was underwater. We we're looking at the rainfall charts out here, seeing whether we we're going to be able to, to get through. And watching this river like, on its graph just rise really sharply, it had three or four metres of water at flood level over it last week. And now, 48 tonnes of steel is putting it to the test. We just maintain a nice constant sort of two or three kilometres an hour. Safely over. But the boys must stay alert. They could have company out here. And we just see a, a motorbike track tyre line up the middle of the line. With roads in the area flooded, some of the locals are using the elevated rail track instead. A lot of locals would actually start driving their four-wheel drives across the rail bridge. It's good to make that bit of noise, let the locals know you're back in town. But it's not just people Will needs to watch out for. This is dingo. Oh. I've just spotted something just uh, next to the line that that dingo was actually in the middle of. We've actually got his kill here, the big large male wallaroo. If you look at his neck, I'd say the dingo's grabbed him and, uh, and suffocated him. So, yeah, the only other thing that is move him off the line, we're going to be bringing trains through here and the last thing we want is other wildlife like wedge tail eagles. Uh, goannas, other dingoes, anything to come down and uh, be feasting with this animal and then we come down the line and run into them. So I'll just take them over there into the riverbed a little bit. But this stop has come at a cost. The Savannah Lander is struggling to get moving again on a challenging climb. Yeah, we're going really well, had that momentum, really nice. I've lost it all. We're just getting the packet into the test, yeah? Just the packet. On the outskirts of Melbourne. Driver Chris and Alan are putting a brand new Velocity train through its paces on a slippery stretch of track. Got a little bit of wheel slip there, Chris. I'm noticing a fair bit of dew on the rail and it's not the best surface for adhesions. This train will carry over 200 passengers at a time. Faulty brakes aren't an option. We've got thousands of people relying on them to get themselves to work and to school every day and we have to get it right. The train must prove it can stop sharply at different speeds and all conditions. This will be an interesting test to see how the, uh, the brand new unit handles. The first challenge, brake at 130 kilometres an hour and stop within 765 metres. Here she comes, Al. OK, mate, go for it. A bit of wheel slip okay. there. Yeah, we've got a bit of wheel slip there. That's come up. Uh, we've got about four, about four seconds of wheel slip. Those patches of uh, moisture on the rail seem to upset her a little bit. We've got the centre line is what we're trying to achieve. As you can see, it's sitting right in the middle of the curve, so that is a good brake test still. It's a pass at close to maximum speed. 
Right, Al, 60 k's an hour, full service, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Now for 60 kilometres an hour. Half as fast, but twice as critical. It's the speed at which trains approach level crossings and stations. Every time a train driver approaches a level crossing, there's always a sense of trepidation, knowing that somebody might do something stupid. On a daily basis, we're disappointed with some of the traffic behaviour that we see. Go for it. As you know, the 60s are always a bit of a problem. Yeah, held on that time, mate. No, we'll slip in this one. The test team feel confident. But the data tells another story. Yeah, we struggle a little bit with the 60s there, Chris. When we're doing 60 kilometres an hour, the train is supposed to stop in an approximately 170 metres. At the moment, it's stopping at 178 metres. I cannot accept that. We've got to get it down to within tolerance of around 168 to 170 metres. Only eight metres. But in an emergency, that could be the difference between life and death. It's a busy section of rail through there with uh, about eight trucks all up going through and the up and down direction. In North Melbourne, Lara is about to start repairs on a complex section of track while it remains in use. So you've got six trucks here, so anything, just call all trains. Making sure her six-person team stay alive is her main concern. They have to fix a damaged crossing point while 200 ton trains pass at 80 kilometres an hour. Yeah, like six different lines and then you've got them coming in from the other side there, so that's why we've got to have vision on every aspect of the track. Keeping watch is vital. Electric trains can arrive without warning. You think working around trains, they'd be noisy in that, but they're not. They're you actually, um, they're on top of you before you know it. The team use whistles to alert each other to approaching trains. So it's coming right on the right next to us here. And wave drivers through. He's acknowledged that we're all safe. When the coast is clear. Another train, yeah, coming towards the city now, heading on the ups. Over 50 trains will pass through here in the next hour. Yeah, it's a really busy section down here. Yep, yeah, you're right. Lara picks a window. Yep. And the team make their move. But then, another interruption. You right? Right? Yep. Good. The crossing point needs just two new bolts. A small job, but not when surrounded by six tracks of fast moving trains. And getting the damaged bolts out takes some serious muscle. Just as they're making progress, the trains are back. Got a crew, you all want to go home every day and that's the way that we all think about it. Everyone's got each other's backs and really look after each other. Now to finish up. Hold on, how much is that? Bad. It's all good now. See? All right, job done. <laughs> Lara's team has been called to one last job. But as night falls and peak hour builds, the danger also grows. In outback Queensland, the 1960s Savannahlander rail motor is fighting for traction. We saw a lot of vegetation on the line, a lot of grass. We're getting a lot of slippage, lots of slippage. We haven't even started our main climb yet. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Will needs extra grip. 
And that's the job of the train sanders. Yeah, mate, yeah, it's on. They should be coating the rails with sand. No, you got nothing here. Nothing at all. Oh. Will's pushing the pedal down for it to release the sand. Nothing's coming out at all. With the sanders blocked, there's only one option left. So here we go. The sun was right above us. There wasn't any shade. So I walk a few k's up the hill, shoveling sand. You soon, uh, you soon start to feel it. Now it's up to Will to make the most of Lee's hard work. Still slipping. If it doesn't work, they could be stuck out here for days. Yeah, that's working beautifully. A bit of momentum now. Keep this going. Up and running. But there's more trouble on the horizon. A torrential downpour now could leave the Savannah Lander stranded. The reason I'd be keeping an eye on that is all of our creeks flow from that side. The boys need to make it to the end of the line before the heavens really open up. But one final obstacle stands in their path. And this bridge has a troubled past. Completely washed away. Uh, there's still wreckage of it downstream. Eight metres doesn't sound much, but um, it's still not within our tolerance. East of Melbourne, the Velocity train is battling to pass its brake test. From a speed of 60 kilometres an hour, it must stop within 170 metres. Uh, just changing ends to drive back. It's nice to put the brake into emergency at 160 k's an hour. But after a failed attempt, Chris is trying something different. Another high-speed stop could help make the brakes become more responsive. You got your disc surface, you got the pad. On new pads, they could be braking like that. What we're trying to achieve by constant braking is we want a, a full pad to disc. It can be a little bit rough, but a rough stop is preferable to hitting a fuel tanker stuck on a level crossing. Chris pushes the train to its maximum speed. Right, OL, uh, 160 in emergency is coming up. That was good. That, it braked as expected. Now to give the 60 kilometre test another go. Rightio, another uh, 60k an hour full service. Yeah, thanks, mate. And see whether it's paid off. Fingers crossed, mate. Here yeah, she mate. Comes. Let's go for it. Come on, come on, come on stop. Come on. Come on, boy, 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 boy. It stopped. Come on, mate, that's got to be it. That feels good, doesn't it, mate? Feels good. Let's have a look. Oh, 3.1. No, unfortunately, Chris, still a, uh, just a little bit out still, mate. A fail by just three metres. Yeah, oh, this is frustrating. We've been out of here testing for the best part of the day, and we're getting this close, but this close is not good enough. Did you want him any more, Al? Nah, mate. I'll take it through. It's all right. Oh, well, um, yeah, that's where we're at. For today, at least, the boys are out of time. They have no choice but to try again tomorrow. We've got to get in and get it done and, yeah, working under the pump. In the heart of Melbourne, Lara and her team are reaching the end of their shift, but the toughest job of the day remains. With the wear, the train, the track gets a bit wide and they only allow it to go out a certain width before we have to pull it back in a little bit.
Lara and the team must fix the problem in challenging low visibility conditions. It calls for extra safety measures. So we're setting up full protection on the down truck, which means that we've got some detonators out 1,200 metres from where we are now. If it's safe to do so, can you please put your three dots out and display a yellow flag? Set to display 401010 and let me know when you've set up, please. Will do, Rob. These detonators are crucial for the safety of Lara's team. When a train passes over them, they'll warn the driver of the workers up ahead. Steve to Rob, gets her down, Rob, displaying a yellow light. Yeah, I'll copy that, Steve. Protection set for the down track, yellow light displayed. Copy that, thank you, guys. All right, guys, we're good to go. Well, this is set. I'll grab a look out for the ups. Yep. And we'll protect it on the downs. With their vital alarm system in place, it's time to get to work. So the track next to us on the up, that's completely live, so we've got to stay completely clear of that. And we'll just keep it on this track and make sure we're keeping it contained. So we're just looking for some fault for loose plates and checking gauge through here, making sure it's not too wide or too tight. When Lara finds sections of track that are the wrong width... It's about 8 mil tight there. ..the team must drill new holes... ..and hammer in dog spikes to fix them. ..while staying alert in the fading light. We're not protected on that, so you've got to make sure as soon as Rob sees it, pull him up and making sure, because you might trip or anything like that, so we just stop and stay clear of it. They can go up to uh, 80 k's through here, so you get pretty quick. It's their toughest task so far, trying to work in between the trains, dealing with low light and equipment getting jammed. The borer can get stuck in the sleeper, and we mightn't be able to remove it in time for the train. So that's why we have the flagman. Just as they're hammering in the dog spikes. One kilometre down the track, a train is on the way. Steve to Rob, down train over death, Rob. Yeah, I'll copy that, thanks Steve. Down train over death. Uh, yes, please, reach that after this. We all have got clear a track and the track's safe to run over at full speed. But they still need protection. Steven to Rob. Detonators reached it. Yellow light displayed. I copy that, thanks, uh, Steve. I'm just going to check the gauge and make sure it's all right up to the next staunch and so then we know we've completed this area. All that remains is to check their handiwork. That's normal. That's fine. Perfect. Spot on. It's a clean bill of health for this line. We've done our job, yay. <laughs> In the dark. Mission accomplished for these unsung heroes of the track. <laughs> My shout for coffee to me. Yeah. <laughs> In North Queensland. This is probably, the, I reckon, probably the most furious river once it starts flooding. The Savannah Lander has been forced to slow down for one final hurdle. A daunting bridge crossing. That's new from this, uh, this wet season. This track lost this bridge in 2002, completely washed away, and we've been worried about it ever since. So this is one of the ones that we wanted to approach nice and cautiously, take it really easy across it. Safely over. At last, they can deliver much-needed supplies to Alan Start 
at the Ainsley Hotel. Well, with the Savannah Lander running past, it helps us keep on going out here because there's 30 odd people, it's pretty hard running, so when that starts up, it's got people for us, they can bring supplies, it's sort of just another lifeline. After a two day long battle, the boys have made it to their destination at Forsyth and proved the track can be open for business. There's something magical about this track. There was a lot of these little pioneer railways around the place, but they're getting shut down. This track from Cairns out to Forsyth is one of the very last ones that we have. So there's a lot of a character to it. There's, a, there's bumps, there's, there's dips. We wouldn't want this track to be smooth. It really adds a certain charm to it. It's a new day at the Bombardier factory and Alan and Chris have unfinished business. We need to know the brakes work. It's critical for our safe operation. The multi-million dollar Velocity train is urgently needed in service. Alan has made some early morning tweaks to the train's braking system. We went along this morning, Chris, and have a look on the underframe and we were uh, checking the uh, gap between the pads and the calipers. Yep. And uh, we had to adjust a few of them up on the T-car. Going through doing that, let's hopefully that'll help us achieve our 60s today. Yeah, right. If you've, you've got those discs even a little bit out, it can affect your braking Oh, for sure, mate. Yeah, yeah. Now to attempt the brake test, they failed yesterday. So we'll start off with a 60 normal full service. Thanks, mate. Certainly, this is the ultimate test in terms of are the brakes really doing what they're designed to do? Here she comes, Al. The rail is still quite wet, and um, I can feel it's unsteady on its feet. Oh, well, hold on, no it's way made way. a liar of me. It's yeah. holding its feet brilliantly. Oh yes, Chris, that's a lot better. We're only 0.8 of a meter out, so we're getting closer, mate. It's really good. We're just a fraction off the uh, desired stopping distance. We're almost there. Yeah, one more at 60 full service. Thanks, mate. Getting there. How was that one, Al? Oh, we uh, well, we'll have a look, mate. Oh, that was a good one, Chris. Spot on, mate. We got it right on the curve. Well done. So, Velocity 66 has passed all its tests with flying colours. We had a few bugs we needed to iron out, but uh, we got there in the end. And now we just need to uh, put some kilometres on the old girl. And what a fantastic day to go for a drive through the countryside. It's days like today, I love coming to work. When we finally got the 60 tests nailed, I felt like popping a bottle of champagne. It just felt like we'd never get there. But we did in the end, and it was very satisfying. Got to be happy at the end of the day, we achieved what we set out to achieve. Uh, thanks to Chris. Uh, all right, mate. Thanks for your help today. Thanks very much. We were a bit frustrated. We did struggle with a bit of the 60s, but uh, we came through at the end of the day, and, and that's a good result for everyone, mate.